and welcome to project number five in the Python tutorial series. Uh, today we're doing what I think is a fairly exciting program, uh, just because I, I like these text adventure games, and we can finally make one that has some flair, some stu sub substance, and really your only limitations here are going to be your imagination and what you think the user might be asking your program to do. The idea of this uh, program is it's not going to be an entire adventure. The entire adventure would take a really long time to program. Instead, we're going to write just simply a side quest to an overarching adventure. The idea is the player has had an ornate dagger stolen from them by a robber, maybe while they were in town, maybe while they were in inn, but they've received a quest to go get their dagger back and they've tracked this thief down to the middle to a cottage in the middle of the woods and they need to search the cottage until they either find the dagger and leave victorious or in our in the case of our game they leave not finding the dagger and lose this would be a small subquest in maybe a larger adventure game but we're just focusing on writing the small subquest right now You'll find there's a lot you can do with a simple search a single room program. So that's what we'll be doing. Let's head on over to our programming window and talk a little bit more about project number five. So here we are. We have our uh, Python shell open running our program. And because this is intended to be just a smaller part of an overall quest, there's no real opening description. I haven't used any ASCII art, but we can see that as we start this adventure, we're standing outside of a small cottage. The door to the cottage is closed, and the place doesn't look sturdy. There's a thatch roof that hangs off the sides. There's wooden walls. And we know that the robber who took our val valuables, including our dagger, lives here. Our goal is to get inside this cabin and find our dagger. So as the adventure, the first thing I would want to do is enter the cabin. Well, let, let's look around first. So. If you look around, we see we get a short description. We're standing outside the cabin and the door is closed. If we try to enter the cabin right now, we get a message, you must first open the door. So let's type in open door and our program knows how to handle this. And we open the door. We're a bit surprised that it wasn't locked. When I look around the outside now, I can see that the description of the outside has changed to reflect that the wooden door is open. With the door open, I can now enter the cabin. And when I enter the cabin, I immediately get a description of the room. Uh, we enter the cottage. It's a single room cottage. The roof is made of straw and it's in terrible repair. There's several spots leaking onto the wood floor. There's a wolfskin rug on the far side of the room next to a fireplace. There's fresh ash in the fireplace signifying that it's been used recently. There's a small bed in the far corner of the room, but thankfully nobody's in it right now. The room does appear to be empty. There's a tall wooden bookshelf in one corner of the room, a small ornate chest next to the bed, and a small stepladder leaning up against the side of the fireplace. So as we enter this room, we have some clues as to where we can look for this dagger that we're trying to find. As an adventurer, the first thing that I would want to check is this small ornate chest. So let's signify the program that we want to check the chest by typing, typing in open chest. Our program replies, the chest is locked, you need to find a key. Looking at the description, I, th I can think of uh, several places where I might look for a key, but let's start by checking under the wolfskin rug. So look under rug will be the command I give to our program. You check under the wolfskin rug, you find nothing of interest. So our program is able to identify look under rug as a valid command, however there wasn't anything under the rug. We've already checked the, uh, the wolfskin rug, so the next thing we want to check is the bookcase. So let's look at bookcase, and that doesn't quite work. The reason that doesn't work is I didn't program this, this program to understand bookcase. You'll notice that it was called a bookshelf. So one thing that you need to be aware of while you're writing these programs is think of all the different things your users might type in. Looking at bookcase seems like a valid command, but for my program it's not because my program doesn't understand bookcase. So let's try look at bookshelf. That program or that command is recognized. We notice that there's some food and clothes 
placed on the bookshelf. Oddly enough, there are no books. You are too short to see on top on the top shelf. Well, I'd like to see on that top shelf, so let's look around the room again and see if we can get a clue what to do. I read the description again, and I notice the last line, there's a small stepladder leaning up against the side of the fireplace. So let's move that stepladder. So move step ladder next to the bookshelf. Our program does understand that command, and it says we move the stepladder in front of the bookshelf. We're also getting a little bit of a clue here of maybe some other events that are going on. We're starting to get nervous. We've been in here for a while. With the bookshelf placed in front, with the stepladder placed in front of the bookshelf, let's look at bookshelf again. This time, you can see a small key on the top shelf of the bookcase. We're still starting to get nervous. Now that I know where the key is, I'm going to get key. You take the key, and now that we have the key, let's try opening the chest one more time. This time, the chest opens. You open the chest, and we find our missing dagger. Not wanting to lose the game, and having retrieved my dagger, I'm going to give the command for my adventurer to leave. And that would be the end of my adventure here. We've left, we didn't get caught, we got our item back, we've won the game, and in this case, we've successfully completed this little subquest that's part of an overarching game. Of course, that's what happens if you know what to do and you know how to win. Not everyone's going to follow that same order of operations. If we restart this program, we can find some different ways that we're able to fail this program. So let's open the door and enter the cabin again. Inside the cabin, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to waste a bunch of moves. Every time I hit enter, even though it's not doing anything, a timer is keeping track of how many commands the user has entered. After they've entered a fixed number of commands, and in this case I think I used six, it starts to warn the player that maybe you're taking a little too much time. You're starting to get nervous. After you get to your tenth turn, you get a more pressing warning from the program. You'd better hurry. The owner of this cabin could be back at any second. And if you get to the 12th turn without having left or found your dagger, you find footsteps, the man returns, and you lose the game because he stabs you in the neck. So even in our adventure game, it's not real time, but using a timer variable, I can keep track of how many turns the user has taken and add some kind of element of time or urgency to the user so that they can't just look around forever. They've got 12 turns to find the dagger or the game's going to be over. One other thing that um, you know, I put some time into uh, doing, let's uh, open the door and enter the cabin again. When we look around, we see that the stepladder is leaning up the, against the side of the fireplace. If I move the stepladder, we get the message that you move the stepladder in front of the bookshelf. If I look around the room now, the description of the room also changes to reflect that the stepladder has been moved. In this case, a small stepladder is in front of the bookshelf and not in front of, or not next to the fireplace anymore. I can still look around the room and you know, look under a rug. If my user starts to get a little bit nervous, so they get here, you'd better hurry, the owner of the cabin should be back any second, and they start to decide maybe they're not gonna find their dagger in time, they can still give the leave command and leave the cottage, but fail to reclaim the missing dagger. For our purposes of our subquest, the users just lost the game. But it's a different ending, and as part of a larger quest, it might give you an opportunity to come back at a later time without costing you your life, as it would if you spent too much time searching the room. So at a minimum, project number five should have you create uh, preferably two areas, an outside area and an inside area. You can control where the user is by having a variable and have different, have different commands respond differently depending on what area the user currently is. In this program right here, the things that are available to the user inside the cottage 
aren't available to the user outside of the cottage. Create about five different items or areas for the user to search. In my case, I had a wolfskin rug, a bed, a fireplace, a bookshelf, a chest. And try and think of how you want to set the room up so that the user can logically win the game by searching the room intelligently. You know, one other side note about this program right here is if we open the door and enter the cabin, and if we try to get the key without first finding it, we do get the message, you don't know where the key is. The user must first successfully navigate the bookshelf puzzle to understand where the key is, and all of that is stored in variables. Whether or not the ladder's been moved, whether or not the key has been found, whether or not the dagger's been found, all that is stored in variables so that the program knows what's going on and the descriptions of the room change dynamically based on what the user has or hasn't done. So create a program that's got a minimum of five items, a logical sequence for your user to search, and an end result where the user can either win by successfully finding the item or lose by failing to find the item. Now there's some other neat stuff you can do with this that I didn't do in this program. Uh, you could use a random number generator or use the random.randint command to have the object appear in a different location every single time. You might also add in a way for the user to escape the robber if they come back. Maybe use a random number generator to decide whether they escape with their life or not. So be creative and do some interesting things with your program but when you're done, you should have a fully featured side quest that allows the user to search a room, retrieve an object, and get out while typing in full sentence commands that your program can intelligently interpret. As always, if you have any questions about how to do your program or you need some additional ideas, or maybe your code just isn't working the way you want it to, leave those questions in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out with them and get your programs working. As always, thank you so much for watching the Python tutorial series, and have a great day.